At nightfall, these Taliban fighters turned policemen are on a hunt. They are looking for drug addicts who roam the streets of the capital city. At least 4 million people or nearly 10% of the country's population is addicted to drugs. We are saving them from drugs and guiding them back to the right path to give them a good life in society because it is our responsibility as a new government. Tonight, in front of our cameras, they don't find any. By the grace of God, we've cleaned up this area by arresting all the drug dealers. You were with us on this patrol. Did you see one addict? There are none. Since they took power, the Taliban claim to have immensely improved the security situation in the cities. However, a violent operation by another patrol aims to chase the drug addicts away. A civilian present at the scene filmed it on a smartphone. The violent eviction methods do not prevent the addicts from coming back the next morning. This vacant land in western Kabul is one of the headquarters of the drug dealers. According to these drug addicts, violence against them has escalated since the arrival of the Taliban. The Taliban often come here with sticks to hit us, to scare us. Every time we run away, but sometimes they shoot us with their Kalashnikovs. These men live in inhuman conditions in the middle of the sewage. A number of drug addicts die here every month and are buried in the mud. When we find them, their face is covered in bees, even in their nose. The last man who died, we covered his face with a cloth to chase them away. But despite that, the bees continued to stick to his face. We had to bury him quickly. The drug abuse is nothing new in Afghanistan, and none of the previous government has succeeded in stopping it. In the previous Taliban regime from 1996 to 2001, the fundamentalist group had almost eliminated the production of opium. But now, Afghanistan represents 85% of the world's production. Today, the Taliban are more ambiguous. The Ministry of Promotion of Virtue and Repression of Vice has published a strict code of conduct. But the Taliban leadership makes clear that they would only put an end to the production of opium under certain conditions. Last year, our leaders issued an order that the Taliban are not allowed to interfere in their affairs. If the international community recognizes us, we will ban the planting of these substances as the way it was before 2001. When they do not end up in beatings, the raids carried out by the Taliban also lead to imprisonments, or more rarely to forced rehabilitation, as in this rehab center where places are already scarce. <laughs> Following the recent Taliban takeover, Washington froze the reserves of the Afghan Central Bank, an amount close to $10 billion. Since development aid is blocked, the center has been financially strangled. If we don't get any support from the international community, everything will come to a stop. This is almost already the case. Our activities have been reduced by 70 percent. If the money does not come in, this center will automatically close. According to the UN, in the coming months, 97 percent of Afghans could fall below the poverty line. Faced with international isolation and an economic collapse, it is unlikely that the Taliban will be able to follow through on its promise of drug eradication.